Hello, and welcome to the show. My guest today is Derek Johnson. He's been on the show a couple of other times, once for his film, 40 Years of Rocky, and a second time for his film, Stallone, Frank, that is. He's here today to talk about his new gig, also in film, just a little bit different. You might notice a clothing change in the third segment. I had technical difficulties, and he was kind enough to come back and re-record the third segment of this episode. Thanks for watching. Hi, Derek. <laughs> Good to see you back on the show. It's been a little while. You and I stay in touch outside of the show, but uh, it's good to have you back here. It's good to be back. And we actually got to meet in person since the first two times you were on my show. When I was in Texas a couple of times ago, we drove halfway and met for dinner. And we forgot to get a picture together. I know. There's no proof. <laughs> there's no proof, but no for proof. all of your... Your viewers, you were wearing the Adrian hat. I was. It was requested, and I met the met the request. So it was good. Good fun times. And I'll be back, and we'll see each other again and again. So good to have you here. Let's talk about uh, what you've been up to, because I follow you on Instagram, and it, as I said, we've become friends now. But I want to talk um, in more detail about the project you're working on now and what led from one thing to the next. So let's just get started and. Talk about, um, you know, you've done some big edits and you've been part of some uh, big releases that Sylvester Stallone had with Rocky Four and some edits that he did from a documentary, things like that. Let's talk about that and then let's move into where you're sitting now and what your new gig is. Sure. So, uh, well, it seems like um, the first time I was on the show, we talked about 40 Years of Rocky, mm -hmm. the birth of a classic. Uh, the one that I directed with that Sly narrated. And then the second time, it was, was it about Stallone Frank, that is? It is. Well, okay. It was. So that was the one. <laughs> well, right. Uh, about Frank Stallone. So since since those have released, um, yeah, I just kind of took a weird, crazy, awesome turn in life. Um, I didn't change careers. I actually just added a career. So... Uh, right now, I'm sitting in my brand new office. I am the assistant professor of filmmaking at uh, my alma mater, Stephen F. Austin State University, and uh, in Nacogdoches, Texas. So, a little small university in East Texas, and uh, it's a 40 minute drive from my uh, lake house. So, uh, there's a whole story behind how this all came to be and why. But I'm very thrilled, and um, I'm going to be able to teach film and continue my film career as a filmmaker. So it's a win-win situation. So you're getting to drive to work 40 minutes with no Los Angeles traffic and do something that you love. I, actually, I, I can actually go 40 miles in 40 minutes instead of <laughs> you know, four miles. In 40 minutes. Yeah. Exactly. Good for you. And, you know, so when you you uh, retreated to, and you bought the lake house about the time of COVID and you did some finished work there, you thought it was a little bit more done than it was. So you had to finish the house. You have a tidy house there. You're on a lake. You're near where you grew up. So sometimes you get to see some old friends and be near family. And did you expect that you would stay or did you, were you just waiting to get back to LA and get back to work too? I, I know there's been kind of an evolution in your life that's, it makes complete sense that you are, you have landed where you've landed, but did you think, oh, I got to get back to LA or were you really thinking, huh, this feels better. Maybe I got to figure out a way to stay here. Well, before I answer that, I couldn't quite understand because I have these stupid oh. AirPods in. Did you say tiny or tidy house? Well, you have the tiny house attached to the lake house, right? I yeah, so uh, also tidy. Yes, you're a tidy, tidy guy. But I, I was talking about the lake yeah, house like, and then the tiny house. It's like oh yeah, so the, yeah, the little the little guest house, if yes. you will. Um, yeah, so the house. You've got a little, homestead, is my point. It's, you've got a place yeah. that's your that where you. It was in. like tidy. I thought you said T I D Y. I don't like, <laughs> no, know, tiny house. That. So were you okay. excited to get back to L A? Were you thinking that's where you'd land again, or? As you were spending more time in Texas, where you were bored and raised, did you think maybe I'm going to stick around after all and figure out a way to do that? Yeah, I I had no intention of moving back to Texas. So during 
right when COVID happened, I uh, just started looking at lake houses. All of my stuff was in LA and I found one and it was on the lake that I grew up on. So I bought it and through that course, like I thought, oh, I'm going to go back to LA and still have, you know, keep a lake house and just go back and forth. And, you know, I broke my, my foot and I didn't walk for three months and I was actually editing a project for Sly at the time. So you kind of get nestled into things and you're like, wait, this isn't so bad after all. Mm-hmm. No traffic. Um, done the LA thing. I loved the LA thing, but things started happening to me that slowly started showing me that maybe I should just call East Texas home again. And so I did intend to go back, but I ended up not. And then again, that all led to where I'm sitting at this very moment. So you never know where life's going to take you. And, uh, you just have to roll with the punches. That's good. Uh, so one of the things that I want to ask about that, because there are a lot of people who are in your position and they resist it and they resist it. So did you have some resistance toward staying in Texas? Did you have, I, I know that a lot of your work happens in LA, but I think a lot of your, uh, person, you know, who, who you've become and who you liked as yourself was an LA guy making movies in LA and you had some thoughts about that. So were you resisting this transition and where you were ending up or were you really open to all of the possibilities? Because a lot of people resist it. They think, no, 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 this is the plan I've had for myself and they don't want to detour from that. Uh, A little bit of both. I remember there was a moment I was clearing my shoreline there on the wake and there was just, it was just so serene. And I remember I had a moment I literally go, I'm home. Like I said it out loud. I was like, yeah, this is, I smelled the lake. I I felt the breeze, like I touched the water, like it was home because I grew up on that lake and it really like, like, okay, this is at least right now in my life, this is where I need to be. So moments like that helped me to not fight it so much. Um, But it's, it's a bit of both because when I was there, I would long to come home and, just needed to recharge. Now that I'm here, I long for the city, get that, you know, scratch that itch, if you will. But um, it was a bit of both. Yeah, for sure. I think that's pretty rewarding, a rewarding experience because a lot of people don't get that clarity. And then to have a moment, a light bulb moment like that, that brings it all clear for you is a really, I think it's a blessing for sure. Okay, let's take a break. We come back. I want to talk about what you're doing now and um, and what led to your position now at the university, which is now part of University of Texas as of just a few days ago, right? So that's right. You're that's you're right. part of you're part of the big UT system. I'm an Aggie, you know, but congratulations. I'll be back. We'll be back in just a moment. So let's talk. We're talking with Derek Johnson and a filmmaker and now a professor, assistant professor at Stephen F. Austin, the college you attended. So you're in your office now. Tell us about the project that led you to where you're sitting, the student film project that I want to know how that came about, how they invited you. I know you're a big deal in your town. You have a star on their walk. And so, of course, you're the guy for the job, but I want to know how it happened. Well, you're too kind. Um, no, I, I was doing these Hollywood projects from the lake, and then I uh, directed a my latest feature film, which is not out yet. Whole story there. Um, the strike isn't helping that release right now, but anyway, I, su- I support them. Um, so all this work was happening, all these things were happening, and uh, a good friend of mine named Brad Mall. Um, you may know him. He was he played Dr. Tony Jones on General Hospital for about 22 years. This is also the college he graduated from, and he teaches film here as well. Um, and we all, uh, this film department, by the way, was started by William R. Scott, who is 88 years old. He's been teaching here 61 years. He's still here. His office is just two doors down. Brad is right next door. Created this department. So these are two of my mentors. 
And um, so Brad, um, you know, worked on my film Bloodstreams and a lot of the films I do, the one that I mentioned that's not out yet. And one day we were on set and he goes, uh, next summer, do you want to come back and be the paid professional to teach those students? Now, you have to understand something. They shoot, or we, SFA, shoots a feature film every summer. And every summer, a paid professional, usually, usually an alum, comes in and for the whole month teaches how to make a movie and kind of produces it, if you will. And um, to get asked that is like an honor. So I waited years to get asked that because I made my first feature film here at SFA and had a, a paid professional come in. So to be asked, I was like, it's a full circle accomplishment for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's like a badge of honor. Right. So I went in um, summer, the summer of 2022, and it just felt so right. It was an amazing experience. And you could just kind of tell, like, okay, I might be 40 minutes away and not 10, but this feels right. They felt right. And it just started snowballing from there. Then they offered me to teach a a class as adjunct uh, last spring, spring of 23. I said, absolutely. So I taught one class uh, a couple days a week and that went well. And it just started uh, getting to a point where there was an opening. Well, hold on. Before I get to the opening, I want to talk about that summer uh, filming with the students. So you show up for this high honor and you're all set for it. You certainly have the experience or you wouldn't be offered the position. What was it like the first time you stepped onto a set in that way, remembering back to when you were a student making your first feature film? How much experience, how much emotion, how much effort, how much of your dedication did you bring back with you? And how was it received? What what was it like to work with students who were eager to learn from you now? Well, it was great. I mean, to the point where they loved to tease me <laughs> and uh, they made memes of me every single day. And so I really, you know, that was funny and, and fun. Uh, I was the old guy to the end. Um, and I think it was, it was just, it was, it was just a warm feeling because I was one of them and uh, years prior. And now I'm like the old guy. How many years so prior like, since you keep calling yourself the old guy? Well, to them, I'm definitely the old guy. Uh, I graduated from SFA in 2006. Okay. And I was working with them in 22, so 16 years. Kind of a gap. Um, Should have graduated in 05. But, uh, <laughs> That's a different uh, story. A different, different story. <laughs> and it was, just, uh, it was just a warm feeling. They were very, you know, they were welcoming. How much has it yeah. changed, though, when you stepped on the set as a, as a, as a, teacher as you know the person who's in charge of this whole program for the summer had it changed much from when you were a student I know the feeling changed but filmmaking in general and with the advances in technology and the different things that we can do how much of what you had to teach changed from what you were taught years ago 16 years before well a lot of things have changed mm -hmm. and you said it the technology the these students are far more advanced because they have the technology and because it's cheaper to Require now, but they also have YouTube University and Dr. Google on their side. <laughs> he had uh, DVD commentaries at best, right? Which you know, we st I still listen to because they're great. So the technology had changed. They had more toys to play with, but the foundations will never change. And uh, you know, just fundamental filmmaking and storytelling though, that that won't change. And um, so it was cool to see them having all these toys that we didn't have and um but yet they still had the same it's still storytelling right? story. it's yeah, still storytelling story story absolutely we were we do a film program with students we've been doing it for 11 years now so um we we work with them for a week there's a person mike fierstein who does the hands-on work with the students each week and they create about a two to three minute psa of from a script that they helped write that they're directing, they're acting in, and it's students fourth grade to 12th grade. And it's based on their story, whatever's happening in their school, their climate, character development, anti-bullying, these types of things, even internet safety and social media safety. And 
we have seen over the years too that you know we used to say hey if you have a cell phone you can do this yourself or you can do that yourself and some of them in the beginning didn't and at some ages shouldn't obviously um the younger youngsters and um and i don't know shouldn't is the fair word but most likely don't have one at the younger ages and so um now they really do have all these possibilities it, to even edit on their phones or borrow, you know, one of the other family members' iPad or these kinds of things. To, so storytelling, I think the possibilities are much bigger. We know that some really great films have been filmed on a, on an iPhone now, you know, and that those possibilities are endless. So it is really beautiful storytelling if, you know, without having to have the biggest, fanciest camera anymore. I mean, you think about growing up and you loving films and all the things you wanted to do in film, what would life have been like if you'd have had a, an iPhone that you could make films with, right? Yeah, I was shooting on a camcorder on the VHS, you know, and that, you know, they thought that was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it really has changed. Even the lights, there's a lot of, it's all LED lights now. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that yeah. uh, now 17 years ago. Yeah. It was all old school. So uh, cameras, lighting, editing software, it's all change yeah. but again those fundamentals don't change right well let's take a break then i want to hear about the job now that we got to that part i just wanted to hear about the what led to the job so we're talking with derek johnson we'll be back in just a moment We are back with Derek Johnson. You might notice a change of clothes. That's my fault. I had a technical difficulty for the third segment and Derek was nice enough to come back on a separate day to record it. So thank you for giving me a little extra time in your busy schedule. You are talking to us from your office at Stephen F. Austin University, State University, which is now part of the UT system, as you shared with us. And we talked about your film program that you got to work with the students and you were selected to do that as a residency. But that led to you having a permanent position, which is now the assistant professor of filmmaking, the only one who holds that position or has ever held the position at Stephen F. Austin. So tell us how that came about and why it's important to you to get to work with these students as you were a student however many years ago. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the film department was uh, uh, Professor William R. Scott created it years ago, and he is the only professor. And then Brad Mall is a lecturer here. So they decided to go ahead and hire an assistant professor of filmmaking. And of course, there's room to move up through the years to full professor, like Professor R. Scott did. So uh, I'm very thrilled about that. And I'm happy to be here. I mean, this, uh, it, how it came about was, you know, look, I went out in the industry, I made movies, I'm, I graduated from here. And when I moved back to East Texas, it kind of made sense. Like, okay, I'm 40 minutes away making movies. Why not just tap on a second career and teach at the same time? So what's really neat about that is, is for my professional films, I'll have the ability to hire students as interns or, or whatever and give them the opportunity to make films while they're still students, especially the grad students. And uh, so it's a, it's a good trade. Um, but yeah, it, it means a lot to me to be doing this because I'm all about giving back. And this, what better way to give back than to, you know, professor by day, filmmaker by night, it all intertwines. And, um, cause you know, you got to think about it. Um, there's a new generation coming up and although I'm 20 years older than the, most of these students, one day I'll be 40 years older. And right. someone else will come in and, uh, there's just a lot to teach. There's a lot to teach. And obviously I take pride in this film program because I came up through it. So I want to see it succeed. And it's state of the art. It's tell us about the changes from when you were a student to now to what you just even equipment and things that you have access to that you didn't before. And of course they probably don't know how good they have it, right? They only know what they know from, from starting out right now but how much has it changed from when you were a student well i'll put it this way when i was a film student here we were in one uh classroom with professor arska from there after i left 
they got their own house. We call it the film house. It's a hundred year old building uh, that's part of the campus. So now they don't even have the film house. We have now moved into uh, a brand new facility. Um, it was a four year project and a multi million dollar building. Now we have classrooms, lecture rooms, screening rooms, editing rooms, a sound stage. I mean, it's like a full blown movie studio over here now. So for me personally, to go from a classroom and they had the film house to basically a movie studio. Like you said, the students, they don't realize how good they have it. I do. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty impressive and it's all state of the art. I think it's amazing too. We do a, a student film program that we've been doing for, um, for 11 years now for fourth to 12th graders. And we try to explain to them, you can use, you know, your parents' cell phone, depending on their age or use you know, their own cell phone, uh, iPads, things like that, in a way that you can capture whatever story you're trying to tell from devices that you can hold in your hand every day that you can get familiar with, even having editing software on your phones. So to get to take some, a lot of these kids that are students now of yours grew up with that technology and then to come in and say, well, I can take that and apply it to this other equipment that's far beyond what they would have imagined for themselves. And I think the the less glitchier, the more access we have to the equipment we need to tell a story, whether that's a clunky typewriter or a, you know, really nice laptop, I think it helps ease telling a story. It helps in the storytelling. Well, absolutely. I mean, again, when I was here as a student, you know, we were shooting on DV cam. We were shooting on, you know, physical tape. And uh, a little bit of 16 millimeter, but not really. And now it's just insane. The amazing cameras that they have, all of the equipment that they have, the technology, uh, even again, in the editing software, it just is light years ahead of what we had. But one thing that won't change is the fundamentals of storytelling. Right. That's what I really push upon them is like, hey, look, I'm not here to really focus on the technology. Because that's going to change next week. Right. What has it changed since Homer, since the Odyssey, the Iliad, since the Bible is storytelling, since Greek mythology? That's not going to change. So I really push those foundations and just watch the technology evolve. And it does make it easier to tell your stories in this day and age. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming back. I will come visit you again. We will see each other again. And maybe this time we'll meet at the university and you can show me around and I'll bring it back and show our audience again. So thank you. Congratulations. Enjoy your time and take good care as always. Thank you very much for having me. You're always welcome here. And by the time this airs, I think you will just have had a birthday. Oh, yeah. So happy birthday. Make my birthday week. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate that. See you soon. Take care.